Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today, uh, we're going to look at some of the weird repurposed spaces on the battleship. We are in one of the uptakes right now. Uh, we're right outside the ship's post office. If, if you're following on your book of the general plans at home, this space is 2 CAC 103 TAC 0 TAC Q. Uh, and it's an example of one of those spaces that was repurposed. A lot of stuff changed in the 1980s. They reconverted things over, they removed entire gun mounts and replaced those positions with missiles. They added a lot of stuff. Uh, and usually, when that was done, uh, the, this isn't the right way to phrase it per se, but uh, it was done up to code, which is not the case in this space. And we're going to go through a couple of spaces today that uh, got used for some interesting things. Before we continue, we have a special shout out today. Scott, if you're watching, happy 40th birthday from your wife, Erica, and your children, Cash and Colby, and all of us here at Battleship New Jersey. I'd like to invite you and your family on a special behind the scenes tour with me next time you come out and visit us. So uh, this space is an uptake and those sorts of spaces on this ship are generally left empty. The uptakes are where the hot exhaust gases from the boilers are traveling up to the funnels. So this uptake here is taking the uh, smoke from fire room number three up through this uptake. Notice it's on a curved path so a bomb can't go straight down. Uh, all the way up to the second funnel. It's going to continue to curve back that way as it goes uh, up a couple more levels. So this space would be extremely hot. And in the original plans, it wasn't supposed to be used for anything. And uh, it was probably used for storage. If you checked out the video on the machine shop we did a while ago, we took you in a couple of uptakes that had all of the metal for the machine shop in them. And this one has a bunch of spare gears and other engineering parts uh, laying around. We'll, we'll look at some of that stuff as we walk around the room here a little. Uh, but, as you can see, it was clearly repurposed into an office or workshop. Uh, this one was an electrical workshop in the 80s, and uh, a lot of the equipment you see in here is original stuff left by the uh, ship's crew. One of the uh, things that you'll notice as we walk around this space is there are a lot of battleship-sized tools. Now this uh, screwdriver here is one third of a curator long. I'm six feet tall and this thing is uh, longer than my arm practically. Uh, so, I hate to see this cruise that that goes to. But uh, let's just keep looking around the space. We've already talked about the uptakes here. By far, my favorite uh, feature modification in this space, the air conditioner right here. Uh, so clearly a 1980s vintage window mount air conditioner that they cut a hole in this to uh, mount there to try and air condition this space. Like I said, it's going to be over 100 degrees in here with the exhaust gases coming out of there. So. Uh, very interesting that they cut through this previously watertight, I'm not even sure what it is, vent or trunk of some sort, and just ventilated the uh, exhaust gases from the air conditioner right into there. Some other interesting features of this space, whereas most of second deck is covered with tile and leveling compound that's obscuring the steel deck under, here you can see the six inch thick armored deck that uh, covers the machinery spaces and some of the rivets that uh, hold the various plates of armor together. We already showed you the giant screwdriver. Here is a giant wrench. This 
This thing here under these cables is the ship's propeller wrench. So if we went into dry dock and had to replace a propeller, say it has a damaged blade or something, the crew would pull this thing out of here, take it up onto the main deck, and then a crane could hoist it down uh, into the dry dock floor back aft, and the yard workers could use it to unscrew the nuts holding the propeller onto the uh, propeller shafts. So it, it was interesting to me to find out that the shipyard doesn't just have a set of these wrenches, individual ships carry their own. Well, you'll notice that the museum still uses this space. Um, our, our maintenance department works in here too. So you might ask, well, did the maintenance department just move in here and take over? Um, and none of this was accurate to when the ship was in service. Well, I would point out the uh, ship service telephone mounted here on the bulkhead. This is the only one of the various uptake spaces that has a telephone mounted in it. So, if you're still following at home with your booklet general plans, we are now in space 3, TAC 115, TAC 4, TAC Q. Your booklet general plans will probably call this an SD storeroom. That's what it was throughout most of the ship's career. And yet, at some point, they got rid of the storage in here and turned it into an office. Uh, and so you can see that they installed bookcases and desks and paper racks and all sorts of things. But you can see that the original brackets are still here from when this was a storeroom. Uh, this office, as we can tell from the DC pendant there, was uh, used by a damage controller. And we're right near a DC locker that, uh, in the order of operations, is one of the ones that takes over if damage control central uh, gets knocked down. This is one of the ones pretty high up there. Uh, so at some point, they've turned this into a DC locker. Now, New Jersey is pretty uh, renowned in the 1980s for her damage control. You know, the, the different Iowas, it seems like their captains and crews focused on different things. Uh, Iowa was the crack gunnery ship of the fleet. Uh, and her crew does a lot of gunnery drills and gunnery tests and that sort of stuff. But New Jersey was the, uh, the damage control ship of the fleet. She had the, the crack engineering team. And so they made a number of modifications to the ship to make her better for damage control. Right outside of this space is the old fireman's head, which used to be where the enginemen would wash up before they could go to cruise masks. Because so obviously come out of a 120 degree engine room, you're going to be sweaty, you're going to be covered in oil. Uh, so that they had their own separate head down here so they didn't track that stuff all throughout the ship. But it's inside the armored part of the ship, it's got a bunch of plumbing, and so at some point, very late in the ship's career, it was decided to delete that space, and it never seems to have been reconverted into anything else. Uh, but this space clearly was a conversion, and I'm sure you've heard this before. There's an old anachronistic story out there that uh, once upon a time, the aircraft carrier Forrestal was in dry dock, and they cut through the bulkhead to do something, and they found a completely intact machine shop in there. Or you might have heard that story about Kitty Hawk, or maybe about New Jersey herself, uh, or even uh, Lexington. I have heard this story a thousand times, uh, and it seems to be nothing but uh, scuttlebutt and sailor lore. Uh, I, I've never heard of it as a real thing. And with the booklet of general plans, it doesn't seem like a space could be sealed over with all original World War II equipment in it uh, and then accidentally forgotten until it was open later. This space, however, is the closest I've ever come to that. Uh, this thing that's listed on the uh, blueprints as an SD storeroom, like any number of other similar spaces uh, throughout here. And just so you guys know, this angled bulkhead over here is the backing plate for the armored belt. And this bulkhead here is the holding bulkhead. 
So we are inside of the ship's torpedo and armor defense, whereas past that is all the habitable stuff. So um, never had any reason to believe this was anything but an SD storeroom. And during the mothballing process, everything is sealed up and uh, away they went. Well, when we were exploring the ship, we opened the space up and there's still paperwork in the drawers and tools and equipment laying around and chairs and other things in here uh, as if the crew just walked out. There are very few spaces on any ship I've ever been on that come close to this. And unfortunately, the materials in here were deteriorating because there is no climate control here, so we had to remove all that paperwork and other stuff to the collection space so they could be properly maintained. And again, we know this is intentional because we've got this unauthorized ship alt of the desks that are welded in place around the uh, bolt covers for the armored belt and another ship service telephone. Another space that has a weird use is one that wasn't repurposed. It's been like this all along and was intentionally retained. So right now we are in turret number two, below the rotating part of the turret. Come on down here and check this out. So here we are beneath turret two, and this is where the rotating part of turret two is sunk into the depth. And here you can see one of the frames that supports the underside of this turret. Uh, and underneath the turret, there's just a series of storerooms, like this one, that uh, would have had spare parts for the gunnery divisions. And they're all connected via these small scuttles like this. If you watched our video on the catacomb, those are some of the scuttles that we were crawling through uh, to get through the various parts of the, the foredeck of the ship. So we, we are at the, the very bottom, seven decks down, uh, standing on top of the top of the triple bottom. And uh, some of the store stuff down here is still intact. For example, if you watched our episode on the can openers, there's a whole cubby hole full of them right here. The thing I brought you down here to see is this rack, which is right underneath of the rotating part of the turret. This is an original World War II pipe rack suspended by the overhead via chains, just like the original World War II ones. If you watch our video in the penthouses that each ferry has, you'll see we found the brackets where there were supposed to be racks in there. So it seems like some of the gun crew lived in the turrets. And I don't know if this is, this is your assigned bunk, this is where you live. Good luck finding a bathroom. Uh, or if it is on Tuesday, Johnny sleeps down here, and uh, if we have to go to general quarters, he is immediately ready to go and start energizing stuff uh, while we wait for everybody else to come down from the birthing compartments and get back up into the turret. I'm not quite sure which of those is the right answer. However, neither of those things was true in the 1980s. There wasn't any crew members who lived under the turrets or in the turrets at that time, and most of these beds were taken out. So retaining this bed here was an intentional thing by this uh, the members of this gun crew. And you know, I, I bet Chief didn't come down here too often. I bet there weren't too many officers who came down here too often. Uh, this was probably a great place to skate and take a nap when you were supposed to be working. Uh, so I think that's pretty awesome. When we were in Pearl Harbor, I had a one time for ammunition and supplies. I had uh, a bunk put in a blower pocket, the center gun room blower pocket, and and I slept in there from then on. So you slept in in a, in a turret. Yeah. Uh -huh. Why did you sleep in there? Because I didn't want to have to be going down in the quarters all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I was not went down there for to go to the restroom and or take a shower or something. You're close to where you were too, weren't you? Yeah. Uh huh. What did you do for your last birthday? 
Have you ever gone and visited a museum for your birthday? I do that all the time. And I hope Scott does too. But Scott, I hope to see you sometime um, in the next week when your birthday is. Palace of New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State. We also receive support from a number of other businesses and private individuals like Scott's family. We really appreciate the support, and if you'd like to continue supporting us, there's a link in the description below. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about our museum and what we do. Thanks for watching.